feel about it, like going away to, to another country for two weeks. It's a completely new experience for me because I've been to foreign countries before, you know, so closest to home I've been to Wales and to Northern Ireland and I've been on family holidays to, I think, France. But uh, I went to Pompeii once with school, but those were all very long ago. Like, for none of them, I don't think I was any older than 15. And I was also with people, so I was with my school, I was with my family. And even though this is with the university, it's not like... The same as a school trip, it's not we all leave the university in a bus and all get the plane together, it's we're all making our own way there, and then they're picking us up. And that's just new to me, and it's it's not going to be the same as a school trip where you go around learning and sightseeing, like, I'm, I'm working, I have jobs to do, I've got to dig in the dirt and find things, and I just don't know how to quite feel about that. It's nerve-wracking to say the least but I think I'm mostly ready I've packed this bag this is my carry-on uh, my suitcase is downstairs I packed that in the last vlog and we're going to be going to the airport for about half two. Uh, my flight's not until 5.30 but you have to be there early to do check-in and stuff like that. And also like I come from a family of get there earlies so it is nevertheless daunting. I'm not bringing this with me. Daunting, scary, Ooh. all these sorts of things, and I also don't really know, like, how I'm going to get through the airport. That's the scary part, the airport, the digging in the dirt, that's okay. Airport security, new experience, and... You know, it could be really weird. But it should be fun. But yeah, before I leave, we're going to watch the football final. Uh, the Lionesses versus... Spain? I'm not a big football fan, but, like, if we get to the finals, I've got to watch it, surely. Uh, I really want the girls to win. It's going to be great. Fingers crossed. She looks so good Grew up in the same neighborhood And that's out of rough salt in the wound Spend a few hours on the reservoir Never broke a bone so I'm gonna try hard To prove you wrong That I'm not who I used to be Like a primrose You're never taking me alive So come close And I know why you said it Cause I'm breathing every word in your voice
go. Let's go. So, made it through security. No idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just walking in a circle. And there's loads of makeup brands. Oh, Gucci. Maybe that's a good thing. Sometimes I'm a loner. I wish that you live closer. Maybe then I feel It is impolite to run, but I'm speed walking, we're excited. I'm on my way. Look, there's the gates. This is amazing. This is literally amazing. This does look like a hospital. Maybe that's a good thing.
here, back at the hotel. Just gonna have a shower to refresh from the heat and dirt. Didn't do much excavating this morning, but I'll try and get some this afternoon. In the breaks between the two digs, we often tended to go to the shop next door, which was called Horizonte. It's sort of like a big supermarket, it sold basically everything. The site itself is actually really big, it's called Interamina, you can look it up. We were excavating a bit called the Basilica. Unfortunately though, it was really hot. Italy was in the middle of the heat wave, so it was about 40 degrees in the daytime. In the mornings on regular dig days, we had to wake up at about half four slash quarter to five because we would be leaving the hotel at half past. We'd get a shuttle bus to the site in the early hours, watch the sun rise over the site, and then work three hours before taking a break on the grass. We'd work for another hour and a bit before heading back to the hotel to have lunch. The breaks were great because that meant that we got to shower and clean all the dirt off of our bodies. We began to see why the Romans enjoyed strigils so much, which involved scraping the sweat off with a metal stick. Certainly would have made us feel better. Furthermore, we also began to realise exactly why the Roman bath system involved cold plungers. I don't think there's anything I would have rather take at that moment. Pretty much all of our days would begin the same way, with first the morning sight and then another turn on sight in the afternoon. Watching the sun rise over the mountains was I think the highlight of the trip for many people, and seeing it each morning motivated us. Again, we'd all go to Horizonte most days in the break. We'd have sandwiches for lunch and then would pop over to the store to buy iced tea or a garden cushion to kneel on during our sessions. We also enjoyed looking for ice cream or perusing at the collections of furniture and hardware that they had in the shop. It was basically Italian IKEA and we also enjoyed looking at all the Italian baked goods, although there was a very large number of them that involved hazelnut. The afternoon on site would also involve the same amount of digging, but it would be much hotter. We would dig for technically less time, but that didn't really help much because the heat made it feel equal. Then we'd head back to the hotel at about 6.30 and have dinner. Dinner would be pasta and then some sort of main course. And our group had three or four favourites among the pasta dishes. Vodka pasta, arrabbiata, and matriciana and carbonara were the favourites. Every student on the dig was put into a group with other students and an older student or a supervisor who would run the section. I was in a group of four and the section we were excavating was originally thought to have been part of a footpath. However, some of the bits of wall we found indicated that it might actually have been a house or shops that lined the street instead of a footpath under shelter. What you're seeing now is what we do after we've finished digging something up. We have to brush it to make sure it's completely clean so that we can take photos of it and document it. I was one of two girls chosen to help with documentation at the Cazetta, which involved washing the finds and then labelling them. Cleaning finds is important as it allows the pottery specialist to identify the materials it's made of, which can help us know where the pottery came from. This means we can identify the trade routes that were used in the ancient world. For example, some of the pots here had African origin. Once we'd cleaned them, we'd lay them out in the hot sun to dry. And once they dried, we'd bring them all inside where our expert would label them and put them into the system. On Saturdays, we got the afternoon off, so we gathered on the balcony for drinks before going out in the evening. Hey. The town of Casino was having a festival that night so we all went out together to enjoy the festivities and have a great dance with all the locals. There were lots of food stores, but none of us went to them. We went out for pizza for dinner though.
Some days meant having the day off, and though I couldn't find a church, we had an amazing day just the same. We decided to go on a massive group trip up to a lake, I'm not entirely sure what it was called, where we all went swimming and had a lovely lunch in a restaurant. The swimming was I think the highlight, I've always loved swimming, and seeing the beautiful blue water was really incredible. The drive up was a little less great, considering that we were driving up these mountains in a bus and the roads didn't have that many slides, and slightly rickety, and I wasn't too happy about it. But it was lovely to look at all the scenery around us and to experience this wonderful new place. As we were driving, I was thinking of how jealous my dad would be that he wasn't there with us. He likes climbing mountains and I thought he would have had such a fun time thinking about all the different routes he could have taken to get to the lake on foot, even if it was an hour long trip. The most irritating part of the trip was the fact that a fly got stuck in the curtains by my bus window and it kept flying around and buzzing, although I wasn't worried, I had my headphones on and couldn't hear it. The thing that most surprised me was the mountains. I've seen mountains before, but where I live there's just a lot of hills and nothing that could reasonably be called a mountain. Being surrounded by them was definitely quite new for me, and I thought they looked amazing. couldn't even get to the lake itself, so we had to get out and walk the rest of the way. To get from where the bus was parked to where we were eating and going to be swimming, we had to walk around the perimeter of the lake, so we had a nice little walk as well in addition to swimming and a lovely lunch. We had pasta with goat, which was amazing, and the vegetarians had mushroom. The issue with the swimming though was that I did get badly sunburned on one shoulder, but I suppose it was my own fault for not applying my sun cream properly. I managed to get through the entire two weeks without a single tan, but did burn one shoulder on my day off. How brilliant that was for me, but at least my skin still protected. On the Monday, I was back in the casetta to continue cleaning our fine. This day was a bit weird, because I had to deal with a lot of bone. We found an entire spine, although not sure whether it was from a person or an animal, and a large bone that was about the length of my forearm. Here they are all laid out on the floor. I was also able to clean the inscription that we found a few days previously, which was amazing. I actually preferred it with the dirt on, because you could read the letters better, but I suppose the marble being identified will help us find something. All of the finds from previous years are stored in this room, including that big lid, which was found in my trench and was put together by my friend. I also especially enjoyed having hot chocolate at breakfast. That was very comforting and a good wake-up call, even if it was at five. Another fun task in the trench was pickaxing. There were three steps. You'd pickaxe, someone else would hoe the dirt together, and then the third person would shovel, and the fourth person would take the collected buckets and put them in a wheelbarrow and take them to the spoil heap. I took to wearing bandanas under my hat to protect me from the sun. When we originally got to the trench, the stones that are sticking up here were level with the floor. That's how much we dug down. Unfortunately, it was at this point of the trip that my phone broke. It has since been repaired, since it was just the screen, 
and it was probably a side effect of when I dropped it back in March. However, it meant that I had no footage left for the trip, especially including the flight back. So as a result, the flight back sim is symbolised by this little video of us taking off, but played in reverse. I hope you all enjoyed the video and enjoyed the voiceover style as well. I'm trying to make more in the holidays, but I'm trying to figure out how to edit. I'm not entirely sure what sort of style I want my videos to have, even though it's been a whole year of me YouTubing. Thank you so much to everyone who's watched these videos. It's been very kind of you, and it's been so fun to try making them and to start this journey with all of you. Please like and subscribe if you do enjoy my content so I can continue making it throughout the year and have the encouragement. Goodbye and thank you for watching.